says Australian adults have a right to read, see and hear what they choose. It's a shame that we've actually had to come to this point. But we have come to it. Calling themselves Free Cinema, well-known faces from the film and media community joined Margaret in what quickly became a 500-strong protest against government censorship. I'm here to see a film that I think everyone should have a choice to be able to see. I don't like the idea that um, someone is going to make up their mind, my mind for me. You know, I'm an adult. We should be able to see any film that there is that's around there. That you know, that think this film has been shown in many other countries. So why can't we see it in Australia? What's wrong with us? We have to apply Australian laws and Australian community standards, and that's what we did. Maureen Shelley is one of three Board of Review members from the Office of Film and Literature Classification who banned Ken Park from Australian screens. We felt that the filmmakers went into detail, the scenes were prolonged, uh, there was real concern there about uh, the, the gratuitous nature of some of the scenes in the film. Shouldn't an adult have the right to go and see it and make up their own mind? Adults uh, under the Australian system, adults do have the right to see, hear and read what they would like. However, we have to balance that. This is a complete balancing act that we do and someone has to draw the line somewhere. If you intend to show it, would you care to give me a copy of the DVD? I know you're in And we, don't, we would we prefer not to be here, but unfortunately, we're only doing our job. Why do you have to comply, Margaret? Well, it was agreed. I, I personally would keep it going. Um, Is he, did he say he was hoping you with the summons? Back in Balmain, Margaret's bolshy blood got the better of her. What have you just done? Oh, well, I stopped it and then I put it on again. But it wasn't to last. Pomerantz was not arrested, but her details and those of co-conspirators were noted by the boys in blue. What is running through your mind now that it's been stopped? Well, I mean, a sense of defeat would be the least of it, I must say. I wanted... All these people came here to see this film tonight, and I said I'd show it to them, and I can't do that. So, you know, I feel I've let everybody in this room down, and it's not a good feeling. Is this the end of the issue, or will you continue? with these sorts of public It's going to be the beginning of the fight, really. So, let's see what happens tomorrow. Well, at the end of the day, the people here at Balmain Town Hall didn't get to see Ken Park. However, we've got it on good authority that the film has already been downloaded earlier this week in Melbourne. So it seems that reasonable adults in the Australian community, with a will, can always find a way. James Thomas reporting on a big night out in Balmain. After the break, uh, a special sp uh, sneak peek at another movie, The Magic... ...and sexually explicit scenes that might offend reasonable adults. But critics say the decision infringes on our right to freedom of speech. To discuss the film and the ban, I'm joined by Des Clark, Australia's chief censor from the Office of Film and Literature Classification, and David Ma from Free Cinema, an anti-censorship group. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining Good us. Morning. Good morning. David Ma, if I could ask you firstly, why should people see this film? That's not the point. Um, people have a right to decide whether they go to the cinema or not. It's one of the great freedoms we have in Australia. You're free not to go to the movies. The problem here is that it was decided by the OFLC and then by the review board that no one could choose whether to see this film or not. It's a film that people should be allowed to see if they want to see it, as I understand it. I mean, I've been stopped by the police from seeing it. I'm one of those Australians who hasn't seen it. Now, Des Clark and various critics have seen it, lots of critics, because, of course, it's been shown in all or most of the prestigious film festivals of the world starting in Venice and going through to Toronto, etc., etc., ending up a week or so ago at the film festival in Wellington, New Zealand. But it was banned from the film festivals of Australia. Des Clark, obviously, as David says, all those countries haven't had a problem with the film. What's Australians' problem with it? Well, the festival problem in particular is that I can't give a film permission to be shown at a festival if it's refused classification. 
In this instance, this film was refused classification because of the amount of actual sex in the film that exceeded the guidelines and the tools that the board is empowered to use. So we couldn't give that permission for the festival. But surely, if you classify it for as, a, as an adults-only film, adults should be free to make a decision whether or not they go to see the film. Well, generally, yes, that is the case. But th there's a qualified right, and the right is, is th the task of the board is to make those decisions. In this case, the uh, guidelines say um, the general rule is simulation, yes, the real thing, no. And this film, in the board's view, exceeded that, and so therefore it had to be refused. David, is that fair enough? Well, I haven't seen the film, but the problem here is that a decision has been made, not in terms of the technical rules of the film, but in the end the film was banned, first by the OFLC and then by the review board, because of this notion that it offends against the morality of the country. Now, it's got a masturbation scene in it, and as I understand it, the masturbation is actually real. Now, um, you've got to ask, is this worse than murder? Is this worse than bank robbery? These are things we deeply disapprove of in this country, and yet we allow them to be seen on the screen. Now, the question here is why has a moralistic decision been taken that these issues, and as I understand it, the film does not glorify these issues, it does not eroticise them, it is, does not condone them, it is a film that examines the plight of young adults who are being abused by their parents, who are abusing each other. I understand it's a grim and serious film. So, the, sorry, the, if yeah. I could just interrupt you there, David, and ask that question. Why has a moralistic decision like this been made? Well, it's not a moralistic decision. The board has given three tools to use, and those tools that the board uses are the guidelines, uh, the classification code and the act. And the board's view was that, that it could not make that decision to, to give the film an R rating, or an X rating for that matter, because of the amount of actual sex in it, because it exceeded the tools that the board has given to use. And uh, the film may have merit. But that's not our task. Our task is to apply the rules that we have, and, and the board has done that, I think, quite reasonably. It begs the question, then, from your point of view, David, do the, do the rules need an overhaul, I suppose? The rules aren't so bad. I mean, there are some silly things in the rules, some really silly things, but essentially the rules aren't bad, and the principles are fine. The principles of classification warn people what are in movies, make sure that movies that are unsuitable for young people aren't seen by young people. Now, that's fine. But this was a moralistic decision because in the end, in the stated reasons for the banning, it was because these people felt that this offended the moral feelings of Australians. Now, I don't think that that's a, a sound judgment of what Australians actually believe or of the tolerance of this country. And the problem here is the rules aren't so bad. This was a dud decision. It was simply a dud decision. And the people who made it know it. Des, you know this was a dud decision. Well, David, Tell us what you think of this film. Tell us what ready? you think of this film. Well, I don't think, and that, that's, that's the whole point. A critic, and you might come from a critic's perspective, is there to give qualitative comments on a film. We, we don't give qualitative comments in that sense as to the quality of the art of the film. We do assess it to a degree. The point is, is that the community, and you've endorsed the classification system, the system says it can offend against the standards of morality and decency in the Australian community. That's what the system, the classification system, endorses and, and is done, uh, implemented on behalf of the Australian community. So you can't have a rule that you almost apply. Now, people disagree with classification decisions at both extremes of where, of where they are made, and you're disagreeing at, at one extreme, and that's your right. But this but is, it not is not extreme. It is not a dud decision, it is a decision made with the tools that the classification board has given and the review board. But it's a dud decision because That's your no view. one, of course, and I'm here to state it as clearly as I can, because no one is compelled to see this film. Your classification guidelines will warn people what's in that film and they can decide whether to go to Hoyts or not to see it. But another kind of decision has been made, which is that no one will be allowed to see that film. A film that has now been sold commercially into over 33 countries and has been seen in all of the major film festivals of the world, Australians will not see because of a committee of men and women, two committees who believe that it offends the morals of the country. David, just on that point, if the rules are OK, do we need to look at the makeup of the board and the we men and sure women who do. are making these we decisions? We absolutely have to look at the makeup of the boards that make these decisions. The choice of people who can sit on the OFLC board's classifications, the choice of people, the pool from which those people are drawn, is settled by cabinet. 
And the people who are put to the review board, which is the kind of high court of classification in this country, the choice of those people is one of the most highly scrutinised, politically highly scrutinised processes in this country. So, Des Clark, do you feel that your appointments are politicised? Well, I don't, I don't think so, certainly for the classification board, I think for both, because they're, they're publicly advertised, the board positions, there's a lengthy process gone through, and all review board and classification board appointments are approved by the states and territories, because it's a national cooperative scheme. So, it goes through states and territories before it goes to the Commonwealth. So there is that consultation process and, and the board are statutory decision makers. They're appointed by the Governor General at the end of the day and they take their statutory role very seriously and is they make those though, decisions uh, independently. Considering that you are signed off by a cabinet though, is it fair then for David to say that ultimately your attitude would reflect the attitude of the government of the well, day? I, I don't believe so. I'm not that, quite saying that. No, statutory appointments I think deserve a degree of respect. Uh, judges are statutory appointees too. I mean, it, it is unfair to just damn the board and the review board because of the process is used for many other appointments. The Sorry. process is fine, in a sense. And one of the things that I did at the meeting at the Balmain Town Hall was to correct people who were, who were blaming the Howard government for getting us to this position. The Howard government is a player in it, but I reminded people that the other players are all of the states and territories, and they are all run by Labor governments. And this kind of new moralistic oversight of what we can see in this country is a Labor and coalition government. They're all in it together. What, we're, what we are fighting here is a political culture, not a political party. And it's the regrowth of this culture that it is politically appealing to a very important part of the electorate, those socially conservative people who are fine Australians, but those people are being favoured in a, in a political mix in this country in a way that they haven't been since the 1950s and 60s. That's the problem here. Well, the board is there to broadly represent the Australian community in the first instance, and that, that is why they are there and their task. I, I think that to suggest that the board as such is, is, has that sort of conversation would be quite wrong. The board I'm not suggesting that they have that kind of don't conversation. conversation. But, but you're, you're, once again, it's this thing, yes, we endorse the system and the process, but the issue is, is that the board broadly represent the Australian community. That I dispute. They have they that have I made dispute. a decision on the tools that they're given and that, that is a proper and correct process. If I could just interrupt to ask one final question here. People are still going to see this film regardless. They're, they're going to be able to buy it on DVD, they'll be able to buy it off the internet at some point. Can you do anything to stop them or will you? Well, the, if, if people are found to have the film or to be exhibiting it improperly, yes, they can be stopped by the states and territories um, officers, but the, the issue is, is that the community broadly respects the classification system, they know it, and we've now advised people we think this film is not suitable and therefore it's up to them to make that decision. Or they can fly to New Zealand. Well, they can't, because in New Zealand it's only a festival exemption or for tertiary studies, it is not. Tertiary studies? Exactly. Those people will be destroyed morally. That is a very limited access to the film. And we'll have to leave it on that note, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It looks like the debate's Thanks. certainly not over yet. Thank you. <laughs> Ahead on the program, comparing home loan interest rates seems rather tame, really, doesn't it? And AMC Chairman Roland Williams.